Welcome back to part four of this ALM series. So in the previous video, we set about creating the export solution. And one thing I do want to call out just because it's, it is um, really important to get naming correct and as early on as possible is when I was talking about setting this uh, to match the solution that we're using this pipeline for, I missed out the word test. But that aside, we now have our unmanaged solution unpacked and committed to the repository. So now the next thing we're going to want to do is basically take that code, if we're happy with it, repackage it up, and import it as a managed solution to our upstream environment. So test and then ultimately production. However, because it's currently an unmanaged solution, when we package it up again, it will still be unmanaged. We can't change that in flight. So what we essentially need to do is import it into another environment as unmanaged, export it as managed, and then we've got the managed artifact that we can then put into the more user centric or business critical environments. And what we're going to do, that's kind of where the idea of a build environment comes in. So it shouldn't be an environment that becomes precious. It literally is there just to facilitate the building of an artifact that you can then use to put into your upstream environments. So let's let's get on with it. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new pipeline. We're going to go for the classic editor. Again, still our Azure repos git option and our ALM project repository. Click continue. And we're going to do this as an empty job. For this one, we're going to call this build managed solution, which I think says exactly what, what we're going to do. So we're happy with all of that. As per all the other pipelines we've set up to date, we're going to create that initial task of the Power Platform installer tools to make available the build tools. So let's get that wadded. No further configuration required. We're also going to take this opportunity to click on variables and we're going to populate our solution name variable with the name of our solution. Again, critical name of solution, not display name. So test studio. And once we're happy with that, we'll come back into tasks. Next, we're going to want to pack the solution. So the opposite of unpacking which is where we're going to take the raw code, if you will, the file level makeup of our solution and package it back into a solution zip file effectively. So again, we'll click on the plus icon. And in this case, we're going to search for Power Platform Pack. And that's the one. Again, I'm going to go ahead and add all of the tasks and then we'll come back up and configure each of them. The next thing we're going to want to do now, we've got a package solution or managed, is we're going to want to import that into our build environment. After we've imported it into our build environment, we're going to want to export it again. But the critical bit here is that unlike what we did for development, we're going to export it as managed. And then finally, we're going to use an Azure DevOps kind of feature. And that's the notion of getting that artifact available that in the next video we'll ultimately use in, in uh, as part of a release. So similar, but you'll you'll notice that when you've got your repos, you've got your pipelines, and you've got artifacts. Within here, there's also releases. So for this one, we're going to look for a published artifact. 
task and we want this one here. And if you look at the description, you will see that that one above is like publish, upload a file or directory as named for the current one. But this is publish, build art artifacts to Azure pipelines, which is more um, the one we're after. So we're going to add that one and you'll see that it also has the drop after the name just to make sure it's the right one. Okay, so let's go back to the ones that need attention and configure them. So for this one, again, we're going to make use of variables and our specified variable. We've got the solution output file. We then, the solution is unmanaged at this stage, so that's fine. And that should be that for that one. Now, this is where it could get interesting because I want, we're going to need to specify the service connection. But up until now, we've only specified the application user within a development environment. So I'm kind of going with this knowing it's going to fail but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Next, we'll need the solution input file. So that essentially becomes the same as the outputs. And then we need to make sure, so all of this is fine, because again, we are going into the build environment as unmanaged. We're then going to go for export. Switch it up to service principle. Although I know for a fact this isn't going to work actually purely on the basis. So I'll fill in all of these. Service connection is dictating the environment uh, from which we're, we're making a connection to basically, which if it's development the whole time, that is not going to help us get to build. So I just wanted to kind of do this like just to get you going through the thought process. So this is fine. So we've got the Power Platform Tool Installer. We're packaging the solution. This is all, you know, at the repository level at this stage to get ultimately give us a zip file, like if you were to export a solution in, in the web portal. However, now we are importing this is going to become problematic because the connection here is development. We don't want to import, we could import the solution into development and export it as managed and do it that way. But really we, we want to, to work with the notion of this build environment. So what we're going to have to do here is create a new service connection and for the server URL, we're going to want to come over to aka.ms forward slash ppac. Then when this loads on the left hand side, we'll want to select environments. Once this is loaded, we'll want to select our build environment. And then finally, once this is loaded, we'll want to select the URL. We'll come back on over, prefix it with HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. We'll then want the tenant ID. 
So again, this is asking us as if because we have the service principal radio button selected, we'll need to do that. So I'm just going to fill in these uh, details again, which hopefully I've still got it in my notepad, which I believe I have. What we're going to do here, whilst we're specifying multiple service connections to cover off the environments that we're interacting with as part of the pipelines, we're still ultimately using that single app registration, but we'll also need a application user that's bound to that app registration within each environment. So pop in the secrets. Secret being the one you can't really copy again, but all of the others we could go back for. I'm just going to double. I'm just going to make sure I get this the right way around. So just bear with me. So we're going to come to portal.azure.com and we're going to go to our app registrations. We're going to select the Power Platform Service app registration that we created. And I'm just going to get the tenant ID and the application or client ID. And then this is where I was a bit too ambiguous before because I just called it Power Platform Service, which isn't really helpful. We wouldn't want multiples of these, so I'm going to call this something a bit more helpful. <coughs> Excuse me. So build, and we'll save that one up. I'm also just going to save this for now because it's going to really bug me. So I'm going to come into project settings, and I'm going to come to service connections. And I am going to rename this to development, which is what I should have done all along, because that's the unique bit of the service connection that, that isn't dynamically set anywhere else. So coming back on over to our pipelines. Although this is where I find out I've just deleted it. I'm pretty sure I've saved it up. Perhaps not. I'm just going to pause up here just while I quickly get us back to the stage we were before. Okay, so we're back to where we were. So we're importing the solution into build, exporting it from build. Critically, we're exporting as managed solution. In terms of the publish artifact, task. We can pretty much leave that as is. And just to quickly call out, there is an environment URL here, but want to keep the connection separate just from even an application user perspective if we needed to revoke it in a particular environment. So we'll uh, save queue and we'll see how the job runs. Okay, so we can see here that it failed as soon as it got to the stages that would involve importing and dealing with the build environment, which we're assuming this will be down to the application user. So let's head on over to the Power Platform Admin Center. We've selected our build environment. We've clicked on settings. We've clicked on application users under users and permissions. And now we're gonna click on new app user. We're going to add an app and select the Azure app registration that we made earlier in an earlier video. We're going to select the single business unit, and we're going to ensure that it has the system customizer, uh, system administrator, sorry, role. And then we're going to click create. We're now going to come back on over and rerun the job. So we can just go back in, run new, run and we'll see how we get on this time. Just for completeness, I completely noobed it because when I thought I'd lost my other pipeline, it was purely because it wasn't under recent, it was under all. So we've got that and I've also ensured that under service connections in the project settings, that the uh, grant access permission to all pipelines is selected. So now we'll run it again and this time we should be fine. 
Well, after all that, we've successfully got the pipeline to run. And in the end, it was just due down to typos, such as there was a doubled up on the HTTPS on the service connection, which I changed. And also the solution output file that we needed here was actually in target version. After all of that, everything was fine. And as evidenced by the import and the export history jobs, 